Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at 1822 The Railways of Great Britain. This is a 3 to 7 player auction stock holding route building train game where you take the role of investors in 1822 Great Britain. You will be investing in companies, starting companies, and running companies trying to become the most successful investor. How do you become the most successful investor and win the game? By having the most personal wealth which is your money and your stocks at the end of the final round. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in 1822, the railways of Great Britain. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the map board. On the map board, you have the stock market track, bidding spaces. There are bidding spaces for the concession or major companies, minor companies, and private companies. The round cycle reference, a reference for the bank amount, initial capital, certificate limit, and bidding tokens based on the number of players. The map of Great Britain. These have spaces where you will place track tiles. On the map of Great Britain, you'll see major companies home and destination locations, minor company homes, cities, which are your white circles, towns, which are your black dots, difficult terrain, which has a price in the hex, and on lines between hexes, which you would pay when placing a track going across that line. Off-board locations. These would have payouts when running trains based on the phase. Also, you have a double-sided regional scenario board. This is for the medium regional scenario and the north regional scenario. Bank pool. Dividend tracker. Track tiles. The track tiles will be upgraded from yellow to green to brown to gray. Train cards. The train cards will run L2 to 7E. Player order cards, city markers to help mark T cities. For major companies, you have charters, the double-sided director's certificate and concession, 10% share certificates, large discs to mark the stock market track and the dividend track, and small cylinders. These are your station tokens to mark your cities on the map. Minor companies, you have charters, the director's certificate, a large disc to mark the stock market track, and the small cylinders for station tokens. For our private companies, you have charters and share certificates. Player bid tokens. For the medium and north regional scenarios, you have extra bidding boxes, cheaper L2 trains, and a medium and north regional scenario overview. And then finally, you have your rule book. In this rule book, you have a description of each of the phases and a phase chart. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game, which takes 13 steps. Step one, place the map board. Place the map board in the center of the play area. Step two, place the bank and get starting money. Players will have to supply the bank, which is 12,000, and then place the bank near the map board and get the starting money, which is 2100 divided by the number of players. This information is also printed on the map board. Step three, sort and place track tiles. Sort the track tiles by color and type, and then place the track tiles next to the map board. Step four, place the dividend tracker, bank pool, charters, and share certificates. Next to the map board, you will place the charters, share certificates, and tokens. Step five, stack concessions. Collect the concession certificates, remove LNWR, and then shuffle the remaining and stack the certificates next to the map with LNWR on top. Players are allowed to look through but not change the order, except in the case of P17. Step six, stack minor certificates. Collect the minor company's director's certificates, remove M24 or S and MR, shuffle and stack next to the map board with S and MR on top. Players are allowed to look through the stack but not change the order except for P17. Step seven, stack private companies. Collect the private companies, remove P1, shuffle the stack, and place them next to the map board with P1 on top. Players again can look through the stack but not change the order except for P17. Step eight, fill bidding boxes. You'll fill the bidding boxes in ascending order with the corresponding companies or concessions. Step nine, place the round marker. You will place a round marker on the stock round on the round cycle track. This can be any marker that you're not using. 
Step 10, appoint a banker and get bidding tokens. You will select a banker from the players and give each player bidding tokens based on the number of players. The number of bidding tokens is printed on the map board. Step 11, arrange trains. You'll arrange the trains in ascending order with the double-sided L2 trains on top and the double-sided 7E trains on the bottom. Step 12, determine the player order. You will shuffle and deal a player order card to each player. Step 13, place the London token. You'll place the 20 value London token on the map. Now let's look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of round cycles until one of the three in-game triggers is met. For the first stock round, with nothing sold, the game ends immediately. When a stock token reaches the game end space, if this happens during an operating round, the game ends at the end of that round. If this happens during a stock round, the game ends at the end of the next operating round. And if the bank runs out of money, if it runs out of money during an operating round, the game ends after the set of operating rounds. And if it runs out during a stock round, the game would end after the next operating round. A round cycle. During the first phase, the round cycle is a stock round followed by an operating round. From phase two on, it is a stock round followed by two operating rounds. Now let's look at the two types of rounds. A stock round. In turn order, players can, in order, sell any number of certificates, repay loans, or take a stock action. This would be buying a major share, in phases two through four, converting concessions to director's certificates, or placing or upping three bids. Turns would go around until all players pass consecutively. When selling, make sure that the sold certificates go to the bank pool and that the company can have up to 50% in the bank pool. P16 cannot be sold. You would adjust the director's share when necessary. When selling, you would get the current share price and then drop the company share market token down one. And if there is a token on that space, they would go on the bottom of that stack. Keep in mind that you do have a stock limit. This is printed on the map board and you would sell when you exceed that limit. When you repay loans, when repaying loans, keep in mind that players cannot take a stock action while having loans. You aren't required to sell shares to pay back loans. If your loan is not settled by the end of a stock round, 50% interest is added. When buying a major share, pay either the bank or the company based on where the stock was located. In phase five, you can buy director's shares in this manner. Only one certificate per stock per turn. Keep in mind that you cannot sell and then buy the same company stock. A player cannot own over 60% of a company. You cannot buy certificates that exceed that limit. Keep in mind yellow stock values do not count against the certificate limit. When converting concessions to director's shares in phases two through four, you would choose a red outline space on the stock market, flip your certificate over, place 100 from the bank to the company treasury, and then any remaining from two times the stock market value that you chose, you would pay from your personal money to the company treasury. In phases five through seven, concessions are flipped and can be purchased and the player would select the stock value price, paying two times that value into the company's treasury. In this case, in phases five through seven, the company is not active until 50% of the shares are sold. In phases six and seven, once 50% of the company is sold to the players, the bank would pay for the other 50% of the shares and they would go to the bank pool. Once you've converted the concession to the director's certificate, you would get the charter, station tokens, and destination token. When bidding, players place bidding tokens or up bids. The first bid must be greater than or equal to the face value of that company or concession. Keep in mind that you cannot bid more than your cash. If you want to pay more than the values printed on the bidding track, you would use a spare cube to indicate your bid. Also keep in mind that you cannot withdraw your bid. Once all players pass consecutively, the stock round is over. When the stock round ends, players will pay for the items that they won. The flotation order is highest bid to lowest bid. For minor companies, phase one, the stock value is 50 and starts with 100 in their treasury. In phase two, the stock value is the bid divided by two rounded down with double that stock value as the starting capital in their treasury. Phase three on, the stock value is the bid divided by two rounded down with the bid as the starting capital in their treasury. For each minor company that have no bids, a double-sided L2 train is discarded from the game. For a minor company with no bid in box one, the company is discarded from the game with another double-sided L2 train. Then you would slide items down 
to the lowest bid box, filling in any blank spaces from their respective decks. Then you would adjust the player order with the most personal capital getting the first player, and then the second most would get the second player, and so on. Then you would charge interest on loans, and if a major company is 100% sold to the players, you would move them on the stock market track up one in that column, and if there is a token already on that space, they would go on the bottom. Operating rounds. Companies will run in order, private and concessions, minor companies in descending stock price, major companies in descending stock market price, and ties, you will go top to bottom of the stack. Private companies and concessions pay dividends to their owners. Major and minor companies run by taking 10 steps. Step one, the first turn housekeeping. You'll place a station on the company's home city with LNWR in London, and miners can buy an L train from the bank. Step two, you can acquire private companies. Majors or minor companies may acquire private companies. Consent is required and during the correct phase on the card. No compensation is paid to the player. The card is flipped given the power token or tile. Keep in mind that red private companies can only be acquired by major companies. Green private companies can be acquired by either. And blue private companies cannot be acquired by anyone. Step three, layer up grade track. In phases one or two, each company may place one yellow tile. From phases three on, miners can place a yellow tile or upgrade to a green tile. And majors can place two yellow tiles or upgrade. Upgrades are the immediate color up. So yellow to green to brown to gray. The company must be able to use the track and the track cannot run off the grid without a connection. Towns are solid black dots. Cities are open circles. The pre-printed yellow spaces may be upgraded. Keep in mind that in phase three, Upgrading to green is open. In phase five, upgrading to brown is open. And in phase seven, upgrading to gray is open. When upgrading, all the tracks must be preserved. A chart for upgrading is located on the back of the rule book. Keep in mind that these are free unless you're going through difficult terrain. The prices for the difficult terrain are located on their spaces. Once you've laid or upgrade track, we move to step four. Check your destination. You will check for major companies going from their home city to their destination. Then you will place the destination token for free if they made that connection. Step five, place one station token. This is for major companies. You would pay 100 and then you would place one of your available station tokens on your route. Keep in mind that you cannot move placed station tokens. SECR can place in the English channel for free. You can exchange tokens for free when acquiring a minor company. Step six, Run trains. You'll run trains on your route to establish earnings. Routes must include two towns, cities, or off-board locations up to the train number. Routes must not cross for multiple trains or use the same track segment. The revenue is equal to the sum of the revenue locations. Multicolor off-board spaces give revenue based on the phase. L trains are a one plus one, so one city and one town. But these trains are not required to run to a town. P13 or P14 can run through towns and not count towards the limit. Only one E train can be owned by a player. When you calculate the revenue, the highest earnings must be announced and destinations double that revenue when running a train from their home station. Step seven, pay, split, or withhold dividends. Minor companies always split 50% to the director and 50% to the treasury. Major companies can choose to withhold all of their earnings, pay all of their earnings, or pay half rounded up and withhold the rest. If there are any shares located on that company charter, then you would pay money back to the treasury when paying a dividend. If there was a dividend payout of zero, the stock value moves to the left. For major companies, if the dividend payout was less than the share price, it does not move at all. If it is equal to or up to two times the share price, it would move one to the right. And if it is greater than or equal to two times the share price, it would move two spaces to the right. For minor companies, if they paid any dividend, they would move one to the right. And if they paid nothing, they would move one to the left. Make sure that you're watching arrows for up or down. When it approaches an occupied spot, you would place it on the bottom of the stack. Step eight. Buy trains. This is where you will buy trains. In phase three on, you can buy trains from another company. If a company doesn't have a train, a forced purchase is made. When purchasing from another company, it must be at least one in money. The bank cost is the face value. When the phase changes, you must check rusting trains and remove them immediately without compensation. 
You are allowed to purchase multiple trains during this step, but you must watch for the train limit. You may buy a train that moves the phase and results with you being over the limit as the phase moves, but then you must discard down as long as you are under the limit before purchasing. The double-sided L2 train can be upgraded from an L to a 2. The double-sided 7E train, you must choose when purchasing if you want to have a 7 or E. But keep in mind, only one E train can be owned by each company. When you are forced to purchase, you would pay for a train from the bank or player, and then if you are short on cash, the director makes up the shortfall. If the director cannot make up that shortfall, then you must emergency fundraise. That player would sell stocks watching the normal constraints and not selling more of the current company as to change the director. If still not enough, you would take a loan owing 150% of that shortfall. Step nine, acquire a minor company. This is from phase two on. A major company can acquire a minor company on each operating turn. Keep in mind that you cannot do this on a turn that either of those companies operate for the first time. Both of the companies must connect on a route and London is an exception. The directors must agree and from phase five on, you can acquire a minor company from the bidding box. When acquiring, you get the station, cash, private companies, and trains. The major company pays the miner's director two times the stock market value in cash or up to two stock certificates. When acquiring companies, make sure to check the train limit. If the major company has no exchange tokens, you would leave the miner token on the board. If getting a miner from the bidding box, you would pay 200 to the bank. You must be able to trace a route to that company's home location and then place an exchange token in the home location. And if you do not place an exchange token in the home location, you can transfer one from the exchange to a available on your company charter. Step 10, issue or redeem company stock. Issue stock to the bank and then getting money from the bank to the company treasury, placing a share in the bank pool. Moving the stock down vertically in that column, you can redeem company stock by paying the stock market value from the treasury to the bank and placing those shares on the company charter. Once all of the companies operate, you would move to the next round in your round cycle, and then the round cycles would continue until one of the game end triggers occurs. If it's the first stock round with nothing sold, the game would end immediately. If a stock token reaches the game end space, during an operating round, the game would end at the end of that round, or during a stock round, the game would end at the end of the next operating round. If the bank runs out of money, during an operating round, the game would end after the set of operating rounds, and in a stock round, it would end after the next operating round. Then the players would add up their personal wealth. So they would add their cash on hand and their stock values minus any loans, and the player with the most money is the best investor and wins 1822, the Railways of Great Britain.